is Robert Mardlachi of the Mindshare Learning Report, Canada's Learning and Technology e-magazine. And welcome to This Week in Canadian EdTech. I'm honored to have join me for a Mindshare Learning Moment, Dr. Randy Labonte, who is the CEO of Canny Learn and the host next week of the Digital Learning Symposium in Vancouver, British Columbia. Thank you for joining me, Randy. Hi, how's it going? I'm glad to be here. And well, thanks for first all those of all, watching. I, uh, first of all, I want to ask how you and your family are doing, hopefully healthy in this uh, We're, we're doing well, definitely. Um, and you know, certainly staying apart. Uh, it's a little bit trying because we're missing the grandchildren very much. Absolutely, so you're spending some time FaceTiming with them, uh, hopefully. Absolutely. And, yeah, and uh, and that's a great segue to our conversation about uh, the Digital Learning Symposium and the fact that it was to be a face-to-face -face conference, which we're proudly sponsoring. And uh, it's not your first rodeo. This has happened before. You're pivoting and you're adapting with the tools to make it happen. Absolutely. Well, first of all, the clientele that we have coming to the event are those teachers that predominantly are teaching uh, online, either in a, a fully online uh, distance education program or that are using it uh, in a blended approach in their classrooms. So they're comfortable with the technologies and they're the ones that are actually leading uh, in their school districts as well to support other teachers who are doing emergency remote teaching. So, um, but it, it's an interesting story. It seems to come in the decades and 2010, right. uh, this conference was, was to happen again in a hotel, but there was teacher job action uh, in the province at the time of where we were hosting in BC. And so we couldn't, but we got permission to run it virtually so that teachers didn't have to come to the event for professional development. Um, so we didn't run it um, live online using Illuminate Live, a product at the time that everyone was using. So the, the, the approach is to use the tools that teachers themselves are using uh, for the event so that it's uh, the technology supports the engagement but the focus remains on what that engagement is about in terms of sharing professional learning experiences and uh, new ideas and approaches fascinating and it's very timely as well given the the pause that we're in with face-to-face -face learning and the experts mm -hmm. that you have speaking Alex Koros and I Dr. Koros connected and talked about the challenges and how to uh, infuse remote learning for teachers tips on for those who were reticent to change or didn't have the opportunity to access the technology in the past because let's not discount teachers a lot of teachers have in the past wanted to incorporate tech they just didn't have the, the, the tools at their fingertips well it, it's partly that but the other part of it too is which is what i i said i've done some interviews online as well i mean when i was a teacher what was really important to me was to make a connection with the kids right to understand them uh, you know in terms of where they were personally so the focus right now is i emphasize for everyone needs to be on the social and emotional connections so right. the teachers that got in their cars and drove around the neighborhoods honking their horns to make that connection with their students is amazing. It's exactly what kids need at this point. Right. They don't need a whole bunch of homework. <laughs> they, or worksheets they, what they for need. that matter, because a lot of them are being deluged with, uh, with uh, worksheets. So teachers out they're, there, that's not what they need right now. Well, there's an accountability around the curriculum, mm -hmm. but, but education is not a race and there aren't hurdles on a track that kids right. have to jump through. So it's really important that you engage in some learning activities, but that you're not mastering a, a number of content items. So I think it really is important, particularly those that are doing emergency remote teaching, is that in the early days when we started teaching online, mm -hmm. we basically did the correspondence model and throw content at students. They right. wrote things in there and then we marked them. Um, right. That's one part of it, but it's not the critical part. It's this kind of a connection that's vitally important. Absolutely. Now, uh, how many years is it uh, that you've been hosting your symposium? 17 years. Wow, that's amazing. And what inspired you? Well, it, it, I was working with two others. It wasn't just myself involved in terms of hosting this event. Uh, we had a number of different organizations in BC. Uh, and then when we formed our national nonprofit, the you know, Canadian e-learning network, right. we partnered with the folks in BC and uh, have adopted this and supported this. So there's other events as well that uh, are going on in other provinces that we partner with. 
Uh, this is one that we particularly took the lead on. So we now that we're virtual, we're attracting uh, registrations from across Canada for folks that want to jump in. And we're opening with a panel, of course, of across Canada, uh, what's happening in each of the provinces. So we've got our uh, board members and other uh, members that are joining in to share experiences from uh, each province. So that will be extremely value given the climate that we're in currently due to COVID and addressing Definitely. the short term, mid term and longer term impacts on K-12 and post-secondary. Perhaps you can share with us uh, a bit of the agenda that uh, you can pull up. Sure, be happy to. So uh, basically what we started with is um, the, the, the event was set up online with a digital uh, agenda. Uh, we've been using this for a number of years for folks to, to do um, sort of organize themselves. So, so what we did is obviously we've adapted this mm -hmm. for being in the, not the physical space. So we don't have to put in a room location. We just right. simply need some time. And what we uh, decided to do as well is to take the agenda and, and move it out of this into a learning management system. So most of the teachers, and uh, you can see, you know, we've got events wow. going through all of Monday, Tuesday, now Wednesday as well, and then Thursday. So we took what was a two and a half day conference essentially, and right. we collapsed it into four, four days, or expanded it, sorry, into four days, but collapsed right. the amount of time to four and a half hours maximum. Uh, with only three and a half, three hours of presentation time or connection virtually, because we can't sustain this kind of an engagement uh, through the entire period of time. That, so that's that, very strategic for sure. And and you've got breakout rooms and you've got, um, uh, you you noted earlier yeah. uh, when we were talking about uh, your, you being an early adopter of Zoom, is that you uh, you did the uh, the matrix or what, what do you call the, Oh, I call it the Brady bunch, the Brady bunch. Brady bunch. So, right. so for those that are watching that want to use zoom, make sure you uh, use the gallery view and people have webcams because it right. makes it conversational and it's right. really, really critical. So we're going so, to be using zoom uh, right. for a large part of this. We're also using Microsoft teams, which right. is a lot of districts are using teams an excellent yeah. product that Microsoft is using. Absolutely. But, but Teams is integrated into uh, you know, the environment of the school district. So the privacy issues are dealt with. And, and it's interesting, I'll bring that up because Julia Hengstler is coming to join us yeah. uh, to speak, speak about and, privacy, student privacy. And you've got notable names there in Steve Dotto and Rod Allen, who I know, and Alec Kuros and Michael Barber. So uh, it's, it's, it's interesting to, yeah. to, to note that Rod Allen and Steve Dotto served on a panel in 2015 when we actually were in the hotels. Uh, having a session. So Steve, is, his wife is a teacher, but he's uh, he's an excellent communicator in the digital domain. I really would encourage folks to follow Amazing. Dotto Tech uh, and Verena, as well. Verena yeah. Roberts, what's her uh, focus? Verena, Verena is uh, said doctor, now doctor, I think almost all of them have got PhDs. Yeah. Wow. Um, she's out of Calgary. Verena was one of the founders with Michael Barber and myself with the Canadian e-learning network. Oh, fantastic. Uh, and so Verena has been working uh, a lot in the open source in uh, uh, domain as well and had done a lot of work internationally. So um, she's an excellent uh, speaker, very knowledgeable, and a lot of people follow her as well in the education communities. So the majority of the people that you see there are actually followed by our network. So it was an easy ask for to invite them to come in and be a part of this event. And they, they're Fabulous. providing their time. So, yeah, we really... And and so kicking off on Monday? Kicking off, yes, on, on Monday. Actually, I can show you the, the at a glance. Yeah. Sure, that'd this be is, great. This is a, just a, an internal Excel document that helps organize us. Right. Uh, but you can see, so on Monday and Tuesday, we're hosting it in at Canvas LMS. On Wednesday and Thursday, we're hosting it in Moodle LMS. We're going to be using uh, Big Blue Button. Uh, it's just integrated with Canvas. So that's I'm another online it. Yeah. And it's a Canadian product. So we, That's we right, on Ottawa. In, and they're, they're open source, so, so they kind of hit some of the educational metrics in terms of that. But Canvas has an integration, so they've offered to, to, uh, for us to use Canvas uh, in, in, in integrated with Big Blue Button. Uh, we're going to be using Microsoft Teams for our Learning Commons forums. And then we're also going to be presenters that are comfortable, familiar with Zoom, we're going to be using Zoom throughout. So we, that, plus also we're going to use uh, Microsoft Office 365 uh, documents, web documents, and shared. 
so that others can also find those documents. And we're going Fantastic. to uh, curate the sessions, add links and uh, where present presenters files, and that's all going to be available to the clientele. So if you can't come, and we're recording things, so if, if delegates can't come to a particular time for the right. event, they will have access to the recording as well as all of the commentary and digital exchange that occurs there. Well, it's, it sounds like it will be uh, really rich in content and collaboration and, and almost as good as being in Vancouver. You know, what's interesting is I was speaking to Patricia Garland uh, the other day and the golf courses are opening up. And, you know, I am tempted uh, in the next month or so, if things are not happening here, to jump on the plane. It's probably the safest time to fly in my estimation because there's like four or five people. I've heard of one person on the flight. And to come out and, and uh, get in some golf uh, since they can't come to your conference, so well, <clears throat> I will be there virtually. Well, I, I'm I'm in British Columbia as well, obviously, which is why I'm hosting yeah. it in, in a BC base. But uh, it's it's we're we're very lucky to to have um, it, the kind of leadership here, but also the the quality of the opportunity we have in British Columbia. We're feeling pretty safe. I know that you yeah. know a lot more urban centers there are some significant challenges that people are having absolutely uh, very concerned about that but uh, i know that there's a comfort level for what we're doing in terms of being in the digital domain uh, and there's some experience base uh, so i'm really looking forward to the opportunity to share uh, and, uh, and and to help um, <clears throat> build a capacity in education to actually manage this so that essentially that after, <clears throat> pardon me, after this is over, that what we hope to is that a lot more of the digital learning uh, opportunities and tools and environments are leveraged and used for students and to connect with students so that education is not about showing up sitting in a four by four <laughs> walled classroom. Yeah. It's about experiencing in the world, sharing Absolutely. and using other means and ways of connecting. <clears throat> There's a lot of educators that are doing excellent work at, uh, Steve Hardigan uh, is, does a global education conference online uh, right. globally. And uh, so there's a lot of amazing things that are happening and very good exemplars of innovation. Um, we just need to make it more standard across all of our schools. Well, it's, it's been the greatest uh, transformational <clears throat> period technologically in our lifetime. And I'm excited about the future of learning. And because of leaders like yourself, you will only help uh, lessen the, the, the steepness of the learning curve for, for educators. So thank you for that. Thank you, Robert. It's, it, for me, it's, it's, it's just a brush. It's a privilege to be able to do this, to make a difference, to share. And I know I've worked with the health ministry and the government of BC as well to support them in doing this kind of web conferencing approach. And now they've got <clears throat> town hall meetings that are going on. They've got regular calls that are done. Um, if, you, if you get a chance, go on YouTube to, to listen to the Vancouver City's Council's first online meeting. It was right. kind of hilarious. It was, but people are learning how to manage these uh, online tools effectively. Right. I'm going to circle back to privacy and education. Fundamentally right. important that we protect the privacy of those students that are in our systems. A hundred percent. We uh, are just in the midst of launching the Canadian uh, Learning at Home Coalition, which is a temporary organization of ed tech companies and not-for-profits yes. that, and we're happy to invite you to participate. And this coalition is really intended to help bridge the gap, if you will. Yep, absolutely. And making yeah. it happen. I, I'm going to say I'd be happy to help, but not until after the end of next week. Sounds excellent. Thank you again, Dr. Labonte, for joining me at this moment for a quick chat on your Digital Learning Symposium. Thank you, Robert. I appreciate that. I appreciate your support of the event uh, and look forward to continuing in our partnership. Pleasure. That was Dr. Labonte, the CEO of Canny Learn and the chair of the Digital Learning Symposium next week uh, in Vancouver and virtually, of course. Uh, my name is Robert Merdlanchi of the Mindshare Learning Report. Be sure to check out W Mindshare Learning to get your latest issue. And the next time, until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and keep the digital learning curve steep.